orthostatic ten hypotension is a very common problem, especially in the aging population. It's defined as a drop in blood pressure more than 20 systolic and 10 diastolic on standing versus lying down. So how common is it? At least 20% of patients over 65 have some kind of hypo, uh, of orthostatic hypotension. Um, only about 2% of those people have symptoms that bother them. But these, this isn't the only population that gets orthostatic hypotension, but it, but it is a, an age-related condition. Some of the important sequelae, the things that we need to avoid, are future cardiovascular events. There is an increased risk for any type of cardiovascular event and increased mortality. So some of the risk factors, nonspecific risk, risk factors, can uh, include carotid stenosis, systolic hypertension, oral hypoglycemic agents. So uh, a lot of your diabetics are going to end up with this. Antihypertensives, this has uh, been shown in some studies, but, uh, but not in others. Antidepressants, opiates, and alcohol all can cause orthostatic hypotension, and then uh, dehydration or anything that, that leads to a, a volume loss. So how does this normally get controlled? In the normal system, you have a uh, reflex that, that keeps you from having a difference in blood pressure from uh, when you're standing from when you're laying down. So this happens in uh, the main uh, barrel receptors of the body, which are found in the carotid sinus and in the aortic arch. And so these barrel receptors, they sense the tension um, in those two arteries and uh, send a, a relay message through the brain stem um, back down to the cardiovascular system which uh, um, both increases uh, heart rate and, uh, and clamps down on the blood vessels. So this is how generally when you stand up, uh, your uh, blood pressure is, is kept the same. So, and when it goes wrong, that's going to be due to a failure in, in one of those systems that we just talked about. So the autonomic system is what controls this. So either we've got a failure in autonomics or we don't have enough volume for the autonomic system to make up for the difference when, when you stand up. So this is a, an abbreviated list of the types of autonomic failure that you can see leading to orthostatic hypotension. Uh, multiple system atrophy, uh, also known as Scheidrager syndrome, is a condition uh, that can present, present as Parkinson's um, and is also associated with orth orthostatic hypotension. Uh, the, it's lumped into the uh, Parkinson's plus syndromes. Lewy body dementia, uh, MS, ALS, and other demyelating diseases um, like Guillain-Barre, uh, Guillain-Barre, um, Huntington's, Wernicke's. So you can see basically any of these that cause uh, damage to the central nervous system or the peripheral nervous system can cause autonomic failure. Hydrocephalus tumor, again, just the problems in the, in the central nervous system or the peripheral nervous system that that cause damage. Diabetes and amyloidosis, uh, anti-Parkinson's drugs, alcohol and toxin-related neuropathy, trauma, and uh, just any nerve disease can, can cause this autonomic failure. Uh, hypovolemia, so the common causes are diuretics, hyperglycemia, hemorrhage, vomiting, dehydration, and uh, so both dehydration and uh, autonomic failure are associated with age. So it's one of the reasons that we see 
this so prevalent after the age of 65 as, as uh, people have volume issues and uh, nervous system issues, which uh, can lead to orthostatic hypertension. So on the history and physical, you, uh, you want to look for any signs of volume loss. So uh, skin changes, any, any sign of dehydration, mucosal uh, dryness. You want to look at the list of medications very carefully because uh, more often than not, it's going to be caused by medications. In your medical history, you want to you want to make sure we screen for heart failure, diabetes, alcoholism, and uh, and then we also want to uh, on the physical exam look for any sign of Parkinsonism, uh, peripheral neuropathy, uh, dysautonomia. Uh, check the blood pressure. Uh, labs, you want to get a CBC, uh, blood sugar, and uh, check for syphilis. All these can be associated with it. So how do we treat it? Uh, Non-pharmacologic treatment uh, includes uh, removing the offending, offending medication, if that's the problem. Uh, just controlling the problem by, by not standing up so fast is one thing to do, at least while you're trying to figure out what the underlying problem is. You want to avoid spending a lot of time in the sun, make sure you're drinking, wear compression stockings to help uh, help get the blood back up into the heart, and exercise is, is good at, uh, at moving the blood as well as keeping muscle tone that can help uh, move the blood up. Um, there's a maneuver called the standing leg cross where you cross your legs and, and kind of squat down and uh, and the, that will help you to uh, move the leg, move the blood up, and then just eating smaller meals. This is more associated with the postprandial uh, hyper hypertension. I mean, postprandial orthostatic hypertension, and uh, this uh, um, this is a pretty related condition, but but they they go hand in hand. So if we're going to treat this with medications, you, we can use fludrocortisone, which of course is uh, a mineral, mineral corticoid analog, which will help you to uh, avoid fluid loss. Uh, sympathomimetics like ephedrine, phenylephrine, and midridine help ra raise blood pressure. NSAIDs, caffeine, and pyridostigmine are also used.